just a lost weather balloon. An Air Force spokesman confirms tonight that this was no flying saucer. Alright guys, uh, this is the Bosch that uh, I have shown on a previous uh, video, running it with a small battery, I have it, I took it apart and I took all the windings off and it was uh, pairs, north-south pairs and I'm going to redo it with all north uh, groups. Now I want you to, to, to observe something here, I, I have marked this brush right here this one right here and I'll be putting some more red on it as and also this one apart at 180 degrees and that is the hooking brush for so you can see right there for the pairs and this is the the hooking shaft and on the shaft this is where I put the sprocket that is going to have the the gear on and this is it so um, this is gonna be my positive and the way that I have been firing it what I did on this this is the brush uh, board I took removed the the spring so we can see it and this is this type of motor here this is the Bosch 20 poles it doesn't allow unless I modify that but the brushes fall exactly in a position the way you can see there that I have it on like I have it on the on the diagrams that the brush is starting to almost starting to touch on on that commutator and this is a counterclockwise motor uh, so that's the way it, it rolls the wheel on the on the scooter so now according to the if uh, uh, this is not clear so we cannot see it but the brush seats not exactly at the center of the the, the stators but a little bit off this way you can see that the brush sits somewhere in here right so if we look at it it sits like three quarts of the magnet on on both ends so anyways the way I was firing it this is the north coil and this is the south on the pairs so it was firing it the bisector will be right here on the center of the coils and right here so it is actually firing at the end of the magnet of both and so according to the other hookup it will be jumping too and doing this but anyways you'll see the difference of the amount of, of the type of winding when we do this motor in, in oh, this is hard magnet very very strong and yeah, I don't want to. There's ceramic magnets. And anyway, um, this is the winding, and this is my starting point. I wind like this, so if we get positive there going like this will be projecting these four poles north and these four south so like you saw it 
previously on there uh, so it's going like this I'm sorry you gotta get your hand like that like this and the, it's going in like this towards my fingers so projection north here so now on the on the on the group coils we had two options for the 20 poles first I proposed this one which was uh, grabbing um, sorry it's this one here wrapping five poles and you see the bisector will be right on the center of the the third uh, pole for both but like I said before on the forum um, when we have number four coil of G2 right here it's gonna be pretty close to there but then we have to check it on reality and see which one is more suitable for us the, the difference on this type of motor between grabbing five poles and grabbing four poles uh, it affects the speed of the motor and and it's why because it's a bigger wider coil configuration and it'll have a bigger throw out angle bigger wider so the speed achieved in, by one throw is much distance than by a four pole. Now the way I had it, as you can see, this motor was wound four poles. But, and here is the, the one that I sacrificed to take the parts off. And I tried to do this, uh, but I had to cut the shaft and to get the sprocket out and to get the commutator out on this motor so you can see the shaft is not a simple shaft it has to be uh, lathe and and it's got a different uh, diameter here than here and then the bearings and it's got uh, for the retaining rings another difference here so it was gonna be another piece of cake to do this shaft and have it mount on the so I decided to on wire but anyway the point here is on the on the symmetric model the grabbing five poles and it's got about eight turns per pole uh, per uh, coils but and again this is the symmetric uh, so I mean, I'm going to be doing it I'm gonna first try to wind it with five and then I mount it in there check with the brushes and and see I'm gonna wind two G1 and G2 group one and group two first and then I'm gonna check it against the brushes and see what happens okay guys I took it apart and I still have an hook it here I'm gonna redo it with another wire but just uh, you guys have an idea now I have turned the picture upside down so you understand I am setting G1 which is this brush right here and it's this one here which is hooked now if you notice the uh, the the way the brush uh the, um, the commutator element sits is right across two poles and this is the way that we have it here we have it exactly like that so that means i'm gonna have to start from one pole away which is right here and i'm gonna grab five poles so it's going to be one pole behind, which is this one right here. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to come up this way. Now, this is going to be north. And this is all north, so they all are going to be the same way. So this is one turn. And... I'm going to turn, this is the same wire that was there, um, two, and three, Oops. and four, I'm going to go six turns, and five 
and six. Now, I'm gonna jump one more, one more pull, and I'm gonna come down, and I'm gonna come up in another pull, and that's two turn, one turn, two. three and of course this is tighter I, I'm just doing it for the for the video and four and five and six and then I'm gonna go another one another pull down and I'm gonna come another pull before and this is one two three four five and six so we see how compact is coming out and we already have three <clears throat> and it's a total of four so we go to the last pole here and go before and we do the last coil what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna hook it to the brush. This is, I lost the count, three, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna take this apart anyways. Uh, let's say four. Five. And six. So. Gonna go another one. Just that's it, and come back here, and then we're gonna come back and find this guy right here, the matching one, which is already marked here below, and I'm gonna come like this. So this is it. So <clears throat> we are having a, a very <clears throat> much more compact uh, coil here but again we have to push we we'll have to push in here and, and make sure this is pushed in all the way and so on I have to do it with lesser wire uh, but anyways now I'm gonna hook it uh, cut it and I'm gonna use another wire to do G2 and, and, and G2 will be forward right here so I'm gonna compare then against the status and see if five will be fine okay so I'm already done hooking it below here and I'm going to do G2 and G2 we can see right there is ahead of G1 so this is the way I'm doing it and this is my first coil of G1. One, two, three, four. So I gotta start on two. Five poles down for G2. Meaning, if I start it right here, then I'm starting right here. So I'm gonna look from here. Five poles down is right here. Okay, so I go. four five it's right here and I'm gonna start my first coil of G2 so that's one turn two three four five six 
two turns, four turns, five, and six. And I'm going to do like four because otherwise it's going to take longer. So now I'm jumping another, another one here and I'm coming before. So it's right here. And I'm gonna go one, two, three. And I'm trying to, I'm gonna try, this is this is the coil number one, the furthest out one that I took apart from when I was doing the north-south pairs. And I have chosen it as G2 because it was right at the end of the of the circumference of the rotor and <clears throat> it is the the one that contains less cable so I want to see if uh, that will contain about the same amount of wire so anyways I'm going to jump to the to the third one two three and I'm already there five is coming die right here so I go do One, two, and three, and four. And you gotta be more careful because it's got sharp edges of steel. And five. Anyways, right here. So we got the third coil. And I'm going to go into the fourth coil, which is going to be the last coil. It's going to be the very forward one. So that's going to be three, four, five. I come up here. And then I do six here. So, and this will give me an idea of, uh, give you guys an idea this is number three turn and four wait wrong wrong slot and it's easy to make a mistake here guys so gotta be paying attention I'm watching the camera and seeing if I if you guys are seeing it well uh, so here it's four wires and five and six so this is it so yeah this is what it looks should look like underneath then again I'm, I'm, I'm I have it too bulky it's, it's using too much space out I, I have to push this thing down right on the slots here and push them with a <clears throat> with a wood wooden flat uh, Piece and get them one by one as I want. Not no waiting at this point though. Then uh, going in here, and again, of course, that that will have the insulation. So this will be matching this one right here. So yeah, it's right there. So now it's just this is just done. So I can put it back on the stator and check for. Uh, Check for the position in here, which is, and yeah, this thing is gonna suck it right through. Yeah. So what we have here, it's this way. So yeah, same positioning we had before. So if we get our brush right here this is the way it falls in here and we got it entering I'm gonna put it right in between the two so you guys realize what I'm meaning and yeah see that right there it's got the brush and 
can see the brush right there. No out of focus here. Anyways, it's right there. And now I'm going to take it off. I'm going to see what we have here. Now, we see here the last, the last coil. Center pole is right here. So that means it's before. Let me zoom back. Not that much. So the last coil is number three pole center bisector is right here, so it's fine. And it is about to <clears throat> get disconnected. So I'm gonna take my chances and do it with five. See right there. So oh wait, this is supposed to go that way. So we had it the other way around. This is leaving. No, it is fine. This is G2 right here, and it will be leaving because it's going to rotate that way. So, let me just set it leaving. No contact. And of course, I don't have the time on the video to assemble it, but it will be the best way will be to put the, the bearings at least in one end so we could rotate it. And, okay, so right there is no contact. It's, it's off. It's gone. So let's see where, it's, where the, the last coil from G2 is staying at. Okay, it's right here. So... It, it's still not in the center of the of the magnet which is see right here this is the one this guy right here because this is the last coil is one two and three it's right here and we can see that right there it's not centered with the magnet yet okay but again we have to realize that there is another pushing force here, energizing fully this, this coil, which is set behind. And it's going to repel and attract. So it's going to um, assist the, the, the one that is disconnecting. So it's going to push it. It's not going to be a, a hesitation here. But still, it's pretty well aligned here. You can count the number of poles according to here and see that number five is off right here. Uh, it's not much, but there is no, it'll be here, it'll be right on the center, but it's here. So, uh, gonna give it a try that way. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's at the end, we'll see. I gotta figure out still how many uh, turns I'm gonna use on the whole thing I measure resistance and go from there all right thanks for watching guys